Welcome back to the Super Coach Knife channel. In this video, we're going to look at our tops, chops, traps, and slaps for NRL Super Coach uh, in round nine of the 2024 season. So, for those that are unfamiliar with the format, essentially how it works is we look at the most popular trade in and trade out options uh, for the week, and if we like the trade in option, will we give it the tops? Um, if we like the trade out option, will we give them the chop? If we've got a trading option that we're not so sure about, well, it could be a trap. And uh, if we're trading out someone that we shouldn't, we need to give ourselves a good old slap. So we'll go position by position, uh, starting with the hookers. Uh, and so the tops pick this week is Jaden Braley uh, from the Newcastle Knights. So he's been playing 80 minutes in, in the hooking role, which uh, I guess he has shown he can do in the past. Um, and the Knights do have sneaky good buy coverage. So um, they do have a buy in round 12, which is the week before Origin, um, which isn't ideal, uh, but easy to cover. Uh, then they have a buy in round 16. But aside from that, they do cover the other sort of five bigger buy rounds through the Origin period. Um, and you'd imagine, given that he is sort of on the comeback from injury still, that he's not in consideration for a New South Wales gig. So... Um, Probably going to get him at the, you know, this is the cheapest price you're going to get him for, for that period. So I think if you wanted to get on, uh, this is the week to do so. Um, I do like Jeremy Marshall King as well as a pick, but uh, Jaden Browley probably offers better value. So uh, that's why I've got him as the top pick this week. On the chopping block, I've gone Joey Lussick from the Eels. So I guess has, has done his bit for us, made his money. Um Playing, not playing 80 minutes anymore. So, you know, I think you can still make money from the Lussick to Bradley move um, from memory. Memory is not great at the moment. Um, I did get some feedback about um, putting prices in, break evens in, um, which absolutely I will take on board. But unfortunately, um, in my full time gig as a teacher, I did have parent teacher interviews this week, which meant uh, less time to prepare for this. So, Hopefully next week, you know, can get a bit more prepared and have that information on here. Um, so thanks for the comment. Do appreciate it. Good chance to plug. If you do want to comment on this one, get it down below. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Joey Lussick on the chopping block. The trap this week, and this is going to be the first in a series of traps that aren't really traps, uh, but I've gone with Harry Grant. Uh, and this just purely comes down to, you know, starting to think about origin coverage. You know, if you want to bring Harry Grant in this week, you're more than welcome to. He's clear, clearly the best hooker in the game, both in terms of real-life NRL and super coach, in my opinion. Um, but as I said, he's not going to cover round 13, even though the Storm are playing, because he's going to be playing for Queensland in origin. So, you know, if you do want a hooker this week, I'd look at Braley just because there's better value and better coverage through the origin period. And the slap this week, I've gone with Appy Coruscant. So, um, you know, had a tough week last week, but he was playing Penrith. So, essentially, if you've got a, a gun player that's playing Penrith or Melbourne, shouldn't really expect them to score that well. You know, it's it's a tough fixture for any player, uh, any team. So, you know, don't put a line through him just because he's had one bad game. You know, and I guess as well, there is a bit of up in the airness about who is going to play for New South Wales in Origin 1. They've got a new coach this year. Um, we've heard a bit of chat about maybe Cam McInnes will, will will get a debut and he can obviously cover on the, the bench as a hooker, um, can definitely play that position. So do they have just a single hooker in the squad? Is it Coruscant? Is it Robson? Is Damien Cook still a chance now that Demetrio is gone? Um you know, there's a lot of water to go under that bridge. So hold tight on Appy. Um, obviously, if you do need to chop him in round 13 because of his origin unavailability, then uh, you're more than welcome to. Under the front row, and the top pick this week is Adam Fanilla Blake. Um, so I guess now that Tino is out of the picture for the season, he's clearly top two. Um, Fanilla Blake, that is. 
Um, interestingly, alongside another player on this uh, page, but we'll talk about him in a minute. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, obviously the advantage with Fanua Blake is that he doesn't play Origin, so he will be fresher during that Origin period. Um, I believe the Warriors do have the buy in round 13 and 19. It's definitely two of the big Origin rounds, uh, but their third buy is until round 27. So... Essentially, in those other weeks where there could be players rested, rotated through their benches, you know, we can probably rely on Fenua Black to score some solid points. On the chopping block, I've gone with Terrell May. So, not a slide on the player by any stretch. You know, he's a great player. His PPM is ridiculously good. Uh, he's just not getting consistent minutes. So... You know, when we're at the stage now that we're probably looking at, at starting to set a couple of front row guns um, in our in our front row, um, you know, I think he's done his job, made that bit of money for us, uh, but we can now move him on and, uh, and cash in. <coughs> Excuse me. The trap this week, again, a controversial one, but I've gone with Payne Haas. Um, again, if you want to bring Payne Haas in this week, I wouldn't begrudge you. I brought him in last week. So this is completely contradictory, um, but I guess it's more of a public service announcement that he will be playing Origin. Um, he he's probably the one out of the, this list that you know doesn't seem to to rest. Um, but you know, just that's the you know if you're tossing up between the two, I'm going for North Blake over Haas for that reason. Uh, but as I said, I've got Haas and my team over for North Blake, so take that for what it is. <laughs> Uh, it's getting harder and harder to pick some of these, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, and the trap, or sorry, the slap this week, I've gone with Joe Tarpany. So a few people trading him out. He's not the most popular front rower, but the fact that he covers round 13 and 14, uh, he's not going to play Origin because he's a New Zealand representative. It just seems crazy to me that people are trading him out. You know, I'll, if I had him in my team, I wouldn't trade him for Fanua Blake, Payne Haas, you know, I'd, I'd find another option to, to upgrade there. So I think, yeah, if you've got Joe Tarpany, uh, you've got a really solid pod for round 13 and 14. Um, and then, you know, maybe you can move him on after that. Into the second row and the top pick this week, I've gone with Angus Crichton. Um, and I guess compared to the last few weeks where we've talked about him as an option for, a, you know, cash generation, he now looks like he's full-blown keeper, you know, playing 80 minutes on the edge, scoring tries, you know, it's Angus Crichton of old, back when he was playing for New South Wales. So it'd be interesting to see if he is in the conversation. I haven't heard a lot of people talking about him in there. But, um, yeah, I think if you, you're looking to bring in a gun second row, which I think we are, there's not a lot of cheap options thick on the ground at the moment. I think uh, Angus Crichton is your man to bring in. Uh, on the chopping block, I've gone with Hamale Olakwatu. So he's having a couple of weeks off uh, for a lifting tackle. Uh, DC finally managing to get his way out of it, which is pretty interesting. Um, but I guess I didn't see the tackle, so I can't comment too much on it. <laughs> but uh, I think, yeah, it's a lot of money sitting on the bench for a couple of weeks at this time of the season. Uh, there's definitely plenty of great options that we can trade in that will, you know, especially cover up buy rounds and, and all that sort of stuff. So I think Olaquatu can go. Uh, the trap this week in the second row, and once again, not a trap, but uh, Dave Fafita, you know, even though he is coming off the bench and not playing 80 minutes, he just scores points. He's done this before. They've, you know, different coaches have used him in this role where he doesn't start the game, but then he just comes on, does what he wants. Um, and, you know, as super coach um, owners, we're cheering. Um, but he will play for Queensland. You know, I, I can't foresee, you know, anyone else finding their way onto that edge. So I think, you know, he's one to consider. But uh, obviously, if you're wanting someone that will cover more games through the buy period, probably look away from Dave for feeder. Uh, and the slap, another Raiders uh, player, Morgan Smithy. So obviously, you know, the Raiders had a big loss on the weekend. Uh, but we don't need to, to throw out all the assets. I definitely will talk about a couple that we can chop. But I think Morgan Smithy's with his sort of defensive work rate and 
and the fact that he's English um, won't play Origin. You know, Raiders play around 13 and 14. So I think he's one we definitely do want to keep at least until that time. And then obviously we can reassess. In the halfback spot, I've got the top pick this week is Sam Walker. Maybe a bit controversial. Uh, and if you have a quick look on the rest of the page, it could get a lot more controversial. Um, but obviously, you know, carved up on Anzac Day. Um, you know, will make some good money leading into round 13. Uh, does have the buy in round 14 uh, alongside um, the Dolphins. And can't remember the other one now. So I guess you just got to be mindful about those round 14 players when you're adding them in. If you've already got Angus, for example, um, and then obviously the Dolphins assets that we've uh, talked about and will talk about uh, in the, the remainder of this video. Um, but yeah, you know, just I think there's an argument to bring in Sam Walker um, because of the cash generation and sort of, I guess, building up your overall squad value. Um, just quickly, Ben Hunt, I think he was the second most traded out option after Luke Brooks. Um, chopped both of them. But I guess we'll get to the big talking point, which is I put the trap on Nico Hines. So clearly not a trap based on his last two weeks' performances. However, he does have the Melbourne Storm and Penrith Panthers coming up in the next couple of weeks. And if you were listening earlier when I talked about Happy Coruscant, I said, Anyone that plays the Storm and the Panthers is going to have a tough time. All right? So, you know, if you're bringing in Nico Hines, expecting him to continually bust out big hundreds, you may be a little bit disappointed over the next month, which is why I guess if you are seriously looking at bringing in a halfback, you know, you may want to go down the, the avenue of bringing in Sam Walker, taking his cash, you know, and maybe in that round 14 buy, Nico Hines will have sort of had a couple of lowish scores and his price will dip. He is very expensive at the moment. I mean, if you wanted to pay up, I wouldn't begrudge you. I've had him since the start of the season and, you know, held him as his price dipped at the start of the year. But, you know, I'm just, you know, in terms of overall squad value, you do still want to keep generating some cash. And I think paying the extra 400k or whatever it is to jump from Walker the Hines, you know, may cost you an upgrade in another position. So that's why I've put him as a trap. Again, you know, there's there's lots of great options this week, if I'm being honest. Not a lot of, you know, trap type options. Um, we may have to explore a different avenue for this video because we are struggling in some of the positions. But, uh, you know, I think it's just one of those things that we, we just need to have conversations and talking points and throwing them in these positions just gives a bit of food for thought. Uh, and the slap this week is on SJ. A few people trading at SJ, I'm imagining, trying to bring in a Nico Hines. Not the worst shout, but I mean, again, you know, Sean Johnson will cover throughout the origin period. Probably an argument Nico Hines will too, so it sort of makes that moot. But... Um, you know, as the third best halfback in, in super coach, I would suggest, um, you know, in terms of the NRL available. But, um, you know, I think he's one you can definitely hold on to if you've got him in your team. Under the 5.8s, and I guess very similar to the conversation we had around Angus Crichton, I've got Max Plath as the top pick this week. Um, you know, obviously not at his cheap price anymore but looking more and more like someone we can bring in as a keeper. You know, playing as a lock forward, massive minutes. Um, the work rate is insane. You know, he's really solid that you can have him there as a, you know, a solid base 5.8, and then you can chase the upside with a Dylan Brown, a Cam Munster. Um, you know, even Lockie Galvin at the moment has, is showing that potential. Um, so, yeah, I think you can bring him in confidently. Obviously, if you need to shift him into your second row later, you want to, you know, go the double upside of like a Brown and Munster combo, you can do that too. Offers awesome buy coverage as we keep talking about with the Dolphins. So I think there's a lot to like about the Plath pick. And on the chopping block, I've gone with Ethan Strange. So I was watching a couple of uh, content creators as I was putting this video together this afternoon. 
Uh, sort of suggesting they would hold Ethan Strange, and I definitely wouldn't begrudge people holding. But again, we're still trying to generate a bit of value at this time of year. You know, it's upgrade season. We're trying to get the cheapies off the field, bring the guns in. And, you know, he's made 250k uh, thereabouts, which is really awesome. But, uh, you know, we can now use that to, to get to, you know, there is a couple of center wing options as well, given his dual position um, that we could definitely get onto. And, um, you know, still have the same coverage through Origin without the, the concern about uh, a decrease in value. The trap this week at 5.8, and this is probably the first genuine uh, trap that we're going to discuss, and that is Jai Gray. So he's on the bubble this week. You know, we'll make a bit of money, but uh, Latrell is due back next week. So it's going to be one week of cash. It's probably not going to be that much cash to justify one week cash grab. So I would uh, steer clear of Jai Gray. Uh, and the slap this week, I've gone with Tom Dearden. So again, a bit like, um, I can't remember who it was now, um, but a few people that are, have him are trading him out. Uh, Sean Johnson it might have been. you know. But as we talked about, he's one of these high upside guys, so you can pair him well with a, a plath. You know, if you're worried about the, 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 uh, the down weeks, um, interestingly enough, they play each other this weekend, so that will be interesting to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, he covers round 13 and 14. Uh, you know, with the four monsters in, the end won't be playing Origin. So um, I think, you know, you just hold him until round 16. Well, you, know, you can go a bit earlier, I suppose, if you've got coverage. Uh, but definitely, you know, will offer some good value over the first Origin buy period. Into the center wing, and we've got two options for the tops pick this week, and it really just depends whether you want a gun or a cheapie. If you're looking to upgrade to a gun, you know, the obvious choice is Ruben Garrick. Um, so I had his, his HIA issue a few weeks ago. You know, we were expecting his price to bottom out this week with that, I think it was one point score rolling out of his average. But then he also reminded us of his upside by scoring a massive hundred so a little bit more expensive than we could have got him potentially if he had a quieter game last week but i think we just bring him straight in um, he's going to make lots of money but obviously as a season long keeper so as long as your coverage for round 13 is looking okay i think he is the, the pick of the week uh, if you are looking for a cheap option i've gone with jake gagai so there is some questions around job security but uh, he's got the job for at least this week, possibly next week as well with Tane Milne suspended. Um, and the fact that I guess he was playing last week and they've brought Thompson in this week sort of might suggest that he's moved up the pecking order. Obviously, the other factor with this is the new coach. But, I mean, if this ends up being a bust pick, we do have an option next week um, that we can rely on as a, uh, as a quick ca cash grab on... Um, Jacob Gagai. Chopping block this week, I've gone with James Schiller. So Albert Hoppawati's back uh, playing fullback. So, you know, there was still a spot for Schiller and it's been taken by Nick Cottridge. So it looks like Schiller's slid down the, the pecking order a bit. So we can trade him out, I think, pretty comfortably. He's made us a couple of hundred K, which is really awesome for a center winger in such a short amount of time. Um, so we thank you for his service, and we move on. The trap this week, I've gone with David Armstrong. So it did look really good for the Knights last week, um, but he's only played one game. So the, the golden rule is we always wait until they play their third game to bring them in. So if you want a bottom dollar option, that center wing or fullback, obviously he covers both. That's why I've included Jake Gagai. As I said, worst case scenario is it's a one week play on Gagai. We bring Armstrong in next week. Uh, but I guess worst case scenario is we bring in Armstrong this week. He gets injured. He's out for the season. And we are stuck with a bottom dollar rookie on our bench that, uh, you know, was not going to make us any money. So we just want to make sure he gets through this week, gets named to play his third week, and then we can bring him in comfortably. 
And the trap this week, I've gone with Jack Bostock. So finally the run of attacking stats, so tries and try assists we were referring to, has ended. Um, so his 27, I guess, represents his base, which we always knew was his base. Uh, but again, we're looking at origin coverage. We're looking at the fact that he has been scoring, which means, you know, the Dolphins are producing points. Um, he Obviously, he will top out in price this week, so there will be a temptation to trade next week. Um, but I guess if we can, we do want to hold him uh, through the buys so that we can take advantage of the Dolphins' origin schedule. And at fullback, I've gone the best buy of the week on Trey Fuller. So I guess this, this is one that, that could go either way. And I know for my team, I'm pondering this. And based on the fact I've said he is the best buy, I'm, I am leaning towards um, bringing him in. But uh, it definitely has the, the dream, uh, dream Buller vibes from last year. I guess the difference is, is that he is not the nailed on number one choice. Obviously, the hammer is yet injured. Uh, but there is a couple of little rumors that maybe the hammer will find his way back into the centers. Um, also, there's some discrepancy about the timeline of when the hammer will return. Um, hopefully, the plan is that he comes back just before Origin with enough time to prove that he's fit and then he'll play for Queensland. So there might be a week or two where Trey Fuller's on the bench, but then we do get to take advantage of the Dolphins playing around 13, 16, 19. You know, whether we can hold him that long if he's in and out of the team um, is something we may just have to ponder. Um, but I think, you know, with the, the sort of cash that he's looking at making in the short term, it's, it's almost too good to resist. Um, and then, yeah, on the chopping block, it pains me to say, but I've gone with Tommy Turbo. Um, really should probably be in the slap section. But when I looked at the three or the top sort of trade-out options, I think the top three was Turbo, um, Dylan Edwards, and Scott Drinkwater. And, I mean, Edwards and Drinkwater both play the round 13, round 14, whereas Tommy Turbo is obviously off the origin. So... Um, I guess if you have to pick one, you know, it's Tommy Turbo. I mean, I guess we'll talk about it with my team, but I've got James Tedesco in the, the sort of slot there where I might train him out. It's not ideal because he has bottomed out in price, so this would normally be the week everyone will get on Teddy. Uh, but the fact is we've got someone that's bottom dollar that uh, is going to make a lot more money a lot quicker. Uh, and isn't going to play Origin. So, yeah, Tommy Turbo on the chopping block, but, uh, you know, again, not a strong shout. Um, if anything, probably should be down in the slap section. But we need to get someone out if we're going to bring Fuller in. Um, the trap this week, I've gone with Ryan Pappenhausen. So, again, not really a trap. You know, the Storm do play around 13, 14, I'd, you'd imagine Pappenhausen probably isn't quite in the frame for Origin, given you know his injuries over the last couple of years. He's just trying to re-establish himself as a uh, NRL player. Uh, but I think if you are chasing a value fullback option this week, you just got to go fuller. You know, take that extra cash, and then you know it makes it easier to jump up to Pappenhausen, even if his price does go up in the coming weeks when you're ready to bring him in. Uh, and the slap this week, I've gone with KO Weeks. So, not that he's the most popular owned player. Um, like I said, I'd have Tom and Turbo in this category. But this decision is based on people that have clearly held KO Weeks as a non-playing player for weeks and weeks, to pardon the pun. Um, but he comes in, plays one game, which is, you know, maybe not fantastic. And everyone wants to chop him. It's, why did you hold on to him that long if you didn't believe in the pick? I understand, you know, you can make a heap of money this week by trading Fuller. But, you know, you can move him into the 5'8th position perhaps. Um, you know, I think the cash he's going to make there can, can justify, you know, trading out most options in that position. Um, 
there. It just seemed a weird one for me. So I just wanted to mention that. Because, uh, again, you know, it's not just necessarily going off my personal opinions. I am looking at the most popular trade-ins, trade-outs, and trying to, you know, sort of put my spin on whether I think they're good or bad. That's what this video is all about. <laughs> but uh, I guess we can wrap it up there. So as I said before, obviously, if you've got any thoughts or comments or suggestions for improvement, please feel free to add them below. As I said, I do take them on board. Uh, i just got to find the time to implement them. Uh, which is pretty rare commodity at the moment. <laughs> but uh, give us a like if you enjoy this sort of analysis. Um, subscribe for all the fantasy content on the channel. And other than that, we'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.